Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about the connection between motion graphs and the net force on an object. So imagine you have a motion graph like this, a velocity time graph, where an object is, let's say it's a car, is traveling in the positive x direction for 50, at 15 meters per second for a period of four seconds, and then they hit the brake and they slow down over a period of three seconds to, to, to a stop, and then they speed back up again to uh, 15 meters per second. So what is the net force? What can we learn from this in terms of net force? So uh, with this, we're going to need to know the mass of the car. So imagine the mass of the car is 1,100 kilograms. So let's draw the free body diagram for the car in this case here. So uh, we know that the car is going to have a gravitational force downward on it, and it's touching the road, so it's going to have a normal support force. But we really care about the forces in the uh, x and y, uh, excuse me, just the x direction on this. We don't care about the y direction forces. So what does this graph say that the net force must be in the x direction? Well, uh, remember that the value, the slope of the velocity time graph is the value of the acceleration time graph. The slope here is zero, so that means that the acceleration here is zero. So if the acceleration is zero, that means the net force in the x direction must also be zero. And so if there's a small amount of drag force in this case that's from the wind, uh, then the, the driver is going to have to have their foot on the gas and there's going to be a small frictional force from the road that propels them forward to overcome the drag force. And then the overall net force uh, in this case is going to be zero because the acceleration is zero. Okay. Uh, what about in this situation here? Uh, so uh, let's draw the free body diagram again. So there's going to be the normal force and the force from gravity. And we'll just draw this uh, drag force again, even though we're slowing down, that drag force is going to vary. Uh, forget about that for right now. What's, what's, what about this? Uh, we're thinking about this road force. What's going to happen with that? And also the net force. So here we see that the slope is negative and constant, so that means the acceleration will be negative and constant. The uh, slope of this is um, the rise over the run. The, the rise is negative 15 meters per second, and that occurs over a period of three seconds, right? Seven minus four, that's three seconds. And so this gives us a slope of negative uh, five meters per second per second, okay? So if that's the acceleration, um, is negative five meters per second per second, that means the acceleration is that way, which is, you know, that's consistent with our xy coordinate system. Then uh, if we take the mass into account, remember the net force is just the mass, uh, the total mass of the object times the acceleration. Uh, in this case, that's a negative five, times 1,100 kilograms, that's going to be uh, negative 5,500 newtons. And so this means that if we look at our free body diagram, we're missing a force here. That means the road force must point this way to produce a, uh, a net force that points backwards so that when you add it with a tiny drag force that's going to be there, then the net force is going to be 5,500 newtons. Okay, let's think about this last segment here. Um, again, we're going to have the normal force up and uh, force of gravity down, and we'll say there's some small drag force again. Again, that will vary because the speed is changing. Um, what's going to happen here? Well, just like what we did before, we need to know the slope of this. So the slope, the rise, uh, is positive 15 meters per second, and that occurs over a period of 5 seconds, so it's a more gentle slope than the other one last time. So that's five seconds. And so when you compute that, you get uh, a positive three meters per second per second. Of course, that's going to be in this direction, a positive x direction. So our net force then is going to be, again, ma. m is 1,100. The a is three. So this is going to be a 3,300 newton positive force in the x direction. So that means that to overcome this, I'm going to need a road force, um, a propelling force from the interface of the road and the tires to, uh, 
to be positive 33, more than positive 3300, so that I get a net force of 3300 newtons, okay? All right, hopefully this helps you understand the connections between motion graphs and Newton's second law.